Hi, I'm Bucky Stokes, MileUpDesign.com. This morning I thought we would talk a little bit about the meaning of turning the other cheek. The other night I was watching TV and there was a commentator used turn the other cheek like a joke almost. Say, well, what, what would you do, turn the other cheek? And that's not what, what Jesus meant by that at all. Neither did he mean to go get in a fist fight. Jesus is talking spiritually. Now this is the Sermon on the Mount, and let's, let's read here in Matthew, uh, the fifth chapter, beginning the 38th verse. Jesus talking. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil, but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your clothing, let him have your, all of your clothing as well. And if it, anyone hope forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Now what Jesus is really saying is, don't retaliate. Because if you retaliate, who are you hurting? I know uh, there, there's so many times in life when we, when we really want to get back at somebody. Somebody has done us wrong, so we want to get back at somebody. And what Jesus is saying is, don't, just hold your peace. Don't get back at somebody because who is it going to hurt? I know the times when I've been irritated about something, uh, my blood pressure will go up if I try to retaliate too much. So we don't want to do that. Now there's a perfect example in the Old Testament of how that works. Let's look at uh, Exodus 14. And this is when the Israelites were, um, they were actually trying to escape from Pharaoh. And um, Moses had them on that march, as you know. They were getting away from Pharaoh's army. But Pharaoh's army was closing in on them. So let's read in Exodus. Let's see, this is the 14th chapter, and beginning to read the 10th verse. When Pharaoh's army drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And they were coming with men and with chariots and everything else. So you can just imagine what they were thinking. And here's what they said. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Fear not. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians... Whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. So what he was really saying is, shut up. Shut up. And all this is going to work out. And it did. The very next verse, the Lord is telling Moses, okay, tell him to go forward. Don't cry to me. Tell him to go forward. So this is a, they were retaliating against the person who had delivered them. The, 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 the instrument that God used in, in Moses. Now let's look at one other reference. In 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, the 6th through the 10th verses, let's read that. <clears throat> Humble yourself, beginning to read, the 5th chapter, beginning to read the 6th verse. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the purpose proper time he may exalt you. Now let's just use that. This is a continuation of what we've been talking about. Rather than retaliate, calm yourselves down. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. 
You might feel real low. Well, sometimes we do. We just feel low as we can get. And the Word says in James, jump for joy. Sometimes it's just hard to do. But what we need to do is humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time He's going to exalt us. There will come a time when we get through this test that He's going to exalt us. Casting all our anxieties on Him because He cares for us. Be sober-minded, Peter says. Be watchful. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And that's that someone when we get angry. That's when he's got his best shot. He comes on in on us then. We're angry and so he's prowling around waiting on you, us to get angry so he can devour us. I mean literally. He can destroy what we're to do that very day, that very hour that God wants us to do. Resist him, Peter said, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced for your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered just a little bit, the God of all grace, who has called you his, to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore. Now listen to all this. These are real good verbs. He, he will restore, confirm, st st uh, strengthen, and establish us. That word establish, I always have liked that word. What he's trying to do, what God is trying to do, if we will humble ourselves and get through these tests, what he's trying to do is establish us in the body of Christ to do exactly what we have been called to do. So we're just going through a test to see if we can do that. Jesus is telling us what to do. So this thing about turning the other cheek, Jesus is speaking spiritually. He's talking about don't retaliate in a situation like that because when we do, we get all messed up ourselves. We, 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 our peace leaves us. And, and uh, just like Moses said, hold your peace because once we lose our peace, then anything can happen, right? We, we've got another mind, okay? So that's what Jesus is trying to tell us today. Hold our peace. Turn the other cheek spiritually so that we don't become angry and we lose our reward every time. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've given us. And we just thank so much, th thank you so much for the word that you've given us today. Help us to know that we need to hold our peace, to humble ourselves before you each day, and not to retaliate. Because, well, thank you, Father, for providing us with the opportunity to be tested. And help us, Father, to get through these tests so we don't lose our peace. Thank you, Father, for wanting to establish each one of us in our place of what you've called us to do in the body of Christ. We thank you for it, Father. Thank you so much. And we ask, Father, today that you would bless those who are watching and listening. And give them a good day today. Give them a day full of joy and peace. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. See you next time.